Okay, in this video, we're gonna do a sewer line repair under the slab. Grab your stuff, come with me, we're getting wet. I gotta tell you what, we do sewer and water repairs under tunnels all the time. Matter of fact, y'all saw the beginning of this one last week. Here's what you see. We've got a break here. And the reason that we've got this break is this was not put in in a smooth situation. And what I mean is all this was in a bind. And you know that because it's pushed off center and it's pushed back this way. So here's the deal. What we've done now is we've made the repairs and got it inspected, tested it, everything is good. Y'all get to see us look for the repairs. Sometimes y'all get to even come in and see what it looks like before we make the repairs. Well, this time we're doing something a little bit different. We got all geared up and ready so we can come in and bring y'all in and show you what it looks like after the repairs are made. Sewer leaks, slab leaks, water leaks, all the above, those are some of the most costly repairs in the North Texas area. The reason is we've got black clay. That's what we built the houses on. That's what we have here. The neat thing about it is normally it's pretty stable. Now, when it gets wet or when it gets dry, it tends to shift, it tends to move around a little bit. We've talked to foundation people, we've consulted with them, we've tried to figure out what is the best thing we can do and how's the best way to do it. Whenever we come in for a job like this, not only do we locate the leaks, we come in, make the repairs, but then we have a structural engineer come in, look at the ditch, look at how long it is, how wide it is, how deep it is, look at the spoils that we pulled out, the dirt pile, and look at how much we're putting back in just to make sure we're doing everything right or as good as we can for the customer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take y'all in here with me just to let y'all see what it looks like after the repairs are made. You can see how we make the tie-in, how we support it, and how we do everything we do. So if you're ready, let's get wet. Okay, so you're up under here with me the other day and there was literally a break on this line and a break back here and this line going back. Now there's multiple breaks on this one. So what we're doing is we're actually, or already have, replaced the line over here. As you see, we put a hanger up back here. We've got hangers up here. We've got a shear band right here where we replace this section. Now we left this over here, but we did put up another hanger here just to make sure that this doesn't get pulled in any kind of a bind or stressed in any way. The last thing that we want is when the backfill crew comes in for them to move stuff around. That's what we put shear bands on for, that way it cannot offset, and that's what we put the hangers for. We literally drill up into the bottom of the slab, put a clevis hanger here, sink an acre up into the slab so it won't move. So now these lines here literally, it doesn't matter what they do when they come put the dirt in, this is not going anywhere. Same thing over here, we put another hanger here just to make sure nothing gets stressed and broke so that we know this homeowner has got a good plumbing system for the rest of the time he's here. So as you can see here, remember we had a break here, we had a break here, and then we had a break down at the end. So we ended up putting a new coupling right here, a new shear band here, leaving this line, but as you see again, we put in another hanger. Now, hangers are big in a deal like this because it supports the pipe so that when we do backfill it, it doesn't move anything around, it doesn't bind it, it doesn't stress it, and it doesn't break it. So we've got multiple hangers on it. Now right here, we ended up putting a shear band because we had to rebuild this whole toilet assembly. And getting in here and fighting everything, sometimes it's just almost impossible to do. So we realized the smart thing for us to do is put a shear band here. That way we could tile that together really well put it all in, we got it inspected, had the inspector come out today, climbed under the house, looked at everything with water on it, so we know everything holds, everything's good. The biggest concern that we have anytime we do this is when we come into backfill, if anything gets moved around, stressed or broken, then we're gonna have problems. So that's what all the additional support is for. Okay, so here we are up at the end of it. This is the restroom coming up to catch the toilet. This goes up for the vent and catches the lavatory upstairs. And then we've got an inch and a half line over here that catches the tub. We literally wanted to make sure everything in here was rebuilt because with so many breaks and where they were, we didn't know what else might be under stress that may break in the future or probably already had stress fractures in it. So our whole plan was to come in, replace everything that we could see, everything that we could get to, and put it in stress-free. Like I said, 
the shear bands right here with the metal band around it, this makes sure that this will never shift and offset. So we won't have a problem here. And we've seen a lot of plumbing companies come in and just use a regular fern co gasket. Man, that's just underground. We don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure that whatever we put in is solid, will not move and not have any problems at all. That's the reason for the hangers, the shear bands and everything done the way we do it. So now we're in the other hole on the other side. Now this hole's not quite as deep. This one is only about 12 feet deep. The other tunnel's about 20 feet deep. That's why we went really deep on the other side and just pretty deep on this side. So as you can see, we still made the repairs here too. We've got another two inch line going over here, coming up, catching the bathtub, coming off this toilet, rebuilt it. Again, we use shear bands. The reason being, we don't want anything to offset and multiple hangers. Remember this line here from here back, it was broke here and broke there to where it completely fell. And it was stressed around so they dug out the side of the ditch a little bit. Also, when we tied in here to the main, we built everything all the way up to the bottom of the slab and literally tied everything in so we don't have any problems. Now, we filled this up for the plumbing inspection, tested everything, had the inspector come out and look at it and passed. Now, we get the dig crew, let them come in, put everything back together. So remember, this was the kitchen line. We had to chip out the concrete to get to it, but this was completely broken and it was completely broken on the other end. God only knows how long this has been leaking up under the house and possibly causing foundation problems. We know that the foundation company came in, raised everything up, then had us come back and do a sewer water test. The reason being, they wanted to make sure that their work was not gonna be faulty later because of a leaking plumbing system. This is something we run into all the time here, but now you see how the repairs are made. All right, so we went deep twice today. Notice we did our maximum depth 20 feet first, then our shallower dive 12 feet deep. If you're a diver, you get it. Here's the deal, guys, look. Things like this really shouldn't happen. And I know that houses move due to foundation and moisture and dryness and things like that. But to be honest, if the plumber, especially on this project, it looks like if the plumber would have come in, bedded the system properly, we wouldn't have had any problem. There were too many stress joints on this. So if you're a plumber, think about this. When you're roughing in a house in the very beginning, you wanna make sure you've got a good bed under it. You pack everything good around it. You wanna make it so that when people come in and pile dirt on top of your work, it's not gonna bow it, it's not gonna push it, it's not gonna put it in any stressful situation. Now, this has probably been a great job to come in and look at later as to why this caused the problem, but, you know, look, I started out roughing in apartment complexes 40 years ago. The thought of something like this would have never crossed my mind. So this is something good to look at, good to learn from, and say, now I understand why we have to bed the pipe, put it in tight, don't move things around, pack it, that way it can't move, even when people come in and backfill. So anyway, if you're a plumber or you're a homeowner and you've ever had a sewer slab leak under your house or one that you were working on, do me a favor, leave me a comment down below and let me know what was it like? Were you able to look at it later and say, this is probably what caused this? Or is it something just, look, we really don't know what happened? Because I know that insurance companies, sometimes they won't cover things because they're like, look, it's just wear and tear or it was just a break or whatever the case may be. But this is good information to see later and understand why things are done the way they are. Bedding, packing, everything, guys, that is really huge. Anyway, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. And I'll see you on the next video if you don't get wet.